would you kindly join me for another episode of Bioshock? This is Jewel Smith playing Bioshock the Collection. Normally I like to live stream my videos. But Bioshock the Collection cannot be live streamed. At least not from PlayStation 4. Alright, that is not that interesting. I, I was kind of hoping it would be sort of like a Fusro Dog kind of thing. I mean, it flings people back, but it's not really that powerful. I think I prefer like Incinerate. The Sonic Boom is what it is. I've been calling it Fusro Dog like in Skyrim. Uh, I prefer my Insect Swarm or Winter Blast, really. More items downstairs. Maybe this is where I need to go. Yeah, I don't think I've been down here yet. What weapon do I have equipped? Okay, the steel tip crossbow. That's a new weapon. Oh boy, it's flooded down here. It's flooded and it's creepy. Okay, yeah, I think this is uh, gonna be a new area. There we go. This is where we have not been. I guess this is the bargain basement. I don't trust it. What's over there? Is that a turret? Oh, it looks like a plasmid. Yeah, don't oh, you creepy piece of shit. Let's take a picture of you, spider splicer. Yeah, okay. Oh, I have a new physical tonic, Extra Nutrition 3. The latest in the Extra Nutrition line makes food taste twice as good as it used to. <laughs> okay. Uh, I don't know if I really want that. Gain a great deal of health from snacks and bandages. No, that's fine. I will just store it. And go back to my crossbow because headshots are a guaranteed killer of spider splicers. Are these things all gonna come to life now? Luring me in with this glowing tonic bottle. Oh, yeah, that's one right there. We'll go loot her on our way out. Are they like weeping angels? Like, as long as you don't look away, they won't transform. I bet the minute that I look at this bottle over here, they're gonna transform. I don't suppose I can pick up the bottle. Oh, an automatic hack tool. Yeah, I heard it. I heard it. I heard one. I heard one of them. I thought I heard the sound. The sound of them transforming. Alright. Uh, extra nutrition too. Make your food even healthier. Uh, no, I think I just got something more powerful than that a minute ago. Ugh. All right, let's just store this in the gene bank. Oh, wow. Proximity mines we collected. Yes.
Are any more of them going to transform? Doesn't look like it. Oh, that one. That one just did. Okay. Let's go loot it. Oh, this one too, huh? better have, I was gonna say, you better have some spider splicer organs on you. Where's the other one to loot? I thought I killed one over here. Is it gone already? Making that creepy noise game. Alright, I guess that's all there is to be had down here. But that's enough. Okay, stop it. Just stop making that noise. Green. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna creep out of here, out of the bargain basement. And check the map. Let's see here. All right, so we've gone into the bargain basement. Excellent. We need to go up here next to Rapture Records on the top floor there's some place we didn't explore yet I don't know what that is because I like to look at the whole map I do did we loot this one already yeah we did what's this can't pick up any of that okay thanks Okay, let's look here. Is there anything good I can make here? Um, I don't think I need these tonics. Heat seeking RPGs might be nice. Trap bolts, I haven't even used those. Electric gel, I don't know. Ooh, an auto hack tool. I seem to use a lot of those, so let's make one. Armor piercing auto rounds and exploding buckshot. Well, I don't know how much more I can carry of that. It doesn't show me. Not on here. Where are the armor piercing auto rounds? I think that's the ones down there. Now yeah, maybe I should make some. There, now I have some. Okay, that's fine. For what it's worth. Okay, we've already searched that one. So where do we need to go? Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Oh, dang it. Did I just waste a healing... Yeah, I think I did. Ugh. Oh, I meant to do this. I See, I'm so used to hitting the O for my Pip-Boy in Fallout <laughs> that I hit the O button and instead I healed myself of a tiny bit of health and wasted a health kit. Oh well. Alright, uh, I'm here. I need to go upstairs to Surprise. Okay, what's across from Surprise? Gotta watch the ceilings for those spider splicers. <laughs> that apparently are now covered in plaster. Are these all the ones that were inside Sinclair's place? Oh, for fuck's sake. 
Yeah, I bet these are the ones that were all inside that place. You remember? Oh, Silas Cobb. We'll take that. Thanks, Silas. Remember the statues that were all inside of uh, Sinclair Spirits and then they all disappeared when we came back out? At... That's what that's all about there, I think. No Eve hypos unless I hack it, huh? I'll just get another first aid kit for now. Oh. Yeah, do you have any, uh... Oh, it has more bolts. Yeah, I'll take some of those. And some more machine gun rounds, please. Thank you. Okay, so where are we here? Okay, there's Rapture Records. We want to go next door to Rapture Records. Looks like there's a shop we haven't been in. We went in there and killed a fool earlier in another episode. Oh, Pharaoh's Fortune Casino. That's where we haven't been. You gotta be rich down here to meet a lady. Yeah. How nice you are. Look at all that money. Sweet, sweet moolah. But if we break the glass, it's gonna come after us. auto-hack this thing so it'll help me. piercing ones work better against the robot. Yeah, see they go down in like one shot. I should take a picture of these though. I haven't researched these very much. Oh, I don't want that. What the heck? for your help, little robot. Can I carry more liquid nitrogen, huh? Okay. Can I get in here now? Oh, yeah. Okay. Somebody else broke the glass. Not me, I guess. Slot machine. No, I don't want to gamble. I just want the money. There in the rafters. That's fine. Is there anything else I shot over here that I could loot? No, let's just go in the casino. Okay, in the casino. Into the casino. Pharaoh's Fortune Casino. Let's see what we can find in here, if anything. Oh, my little bot friend is coming with and bumping into all of the <laughs> slot machines. Okay. Oh, there's a security camera up there. I could just shoot it instead of hacking it. Or I could hack it. I don't know. Is it worth it? Freeze it, maybe. Let's 
attack it. What the hell? Oh, it looks like it's going to be a tough one. Well, it's supposed to be sort of middling. Middling easy, but I don't know about that. Oh no, I think I'm screwed. Nope, I did it. I did it. Barely. Barely. I pulled it out. Alright. Thank you. Hey, right, just in the nick of time now. It'll help me out. There you go. Yeah, see? tables. Cool. What else is over here? A jukebox? And... Oh, this is where they're keeping the pool cues. Okay. Guess those can't be weapons. Unlike in Fallout. <laughs> oh, and a health station. Okay. Not much else in here. Let's take a look. Alright, we've looked all around in here. Pharaoh's Fortune, Poseidon Plaza, Eve's Garden. What's over here? Haven't been in there. In the lower atrium, there's something over this direction. Okay, that's a whole other area we haven't been in. And we haven't been up here in the theater. This is in the top of the... I think it's called the Fleet Theater. Fleet Hall Theater. Yeah, there it is. The projection room. We need to go up there. Oh. Bump Culpepper. Yeah, go. I just got the word to put the bump on Anna Culpepper. This isn't some gangster or hard nosed political operative. We're talking about a dizzy twist what wrote a song or two that got under Ryan's wig. Alright. My trusty little robot friend still hanging in there. Nothing. Oh, some money. There we go. Oh, maybe this is the guy that got killed earlier? No? Oh, there's a safe. Oh, and let's auto hack it. Sure. Oh, yes. We need that first aid kit. First aid kits are worth their weight in gold in this game. Oh, no, I think this is the Houdini Splicer. Yeah, alright. Got taken out down here. Alright, I think we need to head back to the atrium. There's not much else we can do inside here. We gotta go back through the frozen tunnel to the atrium. And I think, because that's where the theater will be, and this area back here that we haven't explored. Now we're also gonna see if Sander Cohen is still alive, because I had killed him sort of on accident. I didn't realize he was a bad guy. Oh, 
Oh shoot, another DM. Spider splicer. No, I mean I did realize I didn't realize that he wasn't a bad guy is what I wanted to say. shooting them with armor piercing rounds I think instead of anti-personnel rounds I don't know we'll see uh, <laughs> I get so overwhelmed in this game it's a wonder that I make it through any levels I get all shook up when stuff starts coming at me all right let's just run through here Let's get out of here. This is where the atrium is. Anyway, what was I saying? Okay, I was saying that uh, I had accidentally killed Sender Cohen. I didn't want to. I wanted to leave him alive. Because if you leave him alive, supposedly you run into him later in the game. But I think he, he either attacked me, and so I fought back. I, I don't know. I gotta go back and review the video. Or maybe he accidentally triggered something else. Like, Because I've hacked a lot of stuff in here, and maybe... Some of the things I hacked attacked him or something. I don't know. And so he went aggro on me, you know what I mean? Alright, so I'm here, and if I go down... Okay, I want to go back to the theater, though. So I gotta go around this way. Oh, there's a big daddy coming that direction. But I think they just leave me alone if they don't have a little sister to protect. That's what one of my viewers was telling me. If they don't have a little sister with them, they won't aggro on me. Atlas is a friend of the parasite. Don't be afraid. Oh, there's the gatherer's garden. I've got a hundred atoms, so maybe I should upgrade something. I can have more Eve? Or I can improve my insect swarm. What do you guys think I should do? I know I'm not live streaming. I can't see the live chat. But you can leave me comments. And maybe I'll do something different the next time. Let me know what I should do the next time that I buy something. With Adam. What should I upgrade? Um, yeah, I don't know if I want that. I think I want this. Because I seem to be using a lot of that too. Sure. Why not? Oh, I can get medical expert. Does that matter? Is that mattering? No, I'll just save it. Okay, and speaking of saving, I should save again because I'm surprised this hasn't crashed. It was crashing on me quite a bit when I was playing in past episodes. I had to actually upload like in pieces and then um, like download them to my computer and edit them, splice them together because I was having so many problems. Right, let's see if I can get past. This guy. And into the fleet theater. Okay, now we should be able... Yeah, this is all hacked in here. Oh, hello. I think we can go up this way. This is the way to the projection room. Ah, now we can get in. See? Now we're in the projection room. Lots of film. Search. More film. <gasps> oh, there's the director's comment. Oh, shoot. What is that? Electric flesh. Supercharge your body. The ultimate electricity enhancements. Insulate yourself from harm with new electric flesh. 
You take less damage from electricity and deal more damage when you use electrical attacks. Well, I don't really use electrical attacks much, so... But thank you. Alright. Requiem for Andrew Ryan. She's trying to zap in here to get me, but she can't get through that window, maybe? Moonbeam Absinthe. What is that? Will restore a small amount of health, but drain a small amount of Eve. Absinthe makes the brain go yonder. Cute. Uh, I don't know if I need that, but let's try it anyway. What the hell? Is she gonna be out there trying to get me? Yeah, I think she's trying to... She's trying to zap in here, but she can't. Did I get her? Oh, I don't think I did. Well, no, I did. She's right there. She's dead up on the thing. Another dude. Oh, I think her body fell down there. Alright, well, I don't know how much time I have been playing so far, how much time I have left. Let me check my alarm, because if I watch this director's commentary, sometimes they take 10 or 15 minutes. I think I have time. I think I have time, because... Because I can only upload a certain amount of, uh, gameplay at a time. Oh, I think I got him. Why is it playing the sad music? Okay, well let's watch the director's commentary. Alright, we have unlocked an episode of the director's commentary. Play it now or view it later from the main menu. Spoiler warning. The commentary contains in-depth discussion of plot details. Including the ending. First time players may wish to complete the game before viewing. Okay, well I have completed the game. It was many years ago, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and watch it now. If you don't want to watch it, then I'm just going to go ahead and say thanks for hanging out because I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to watch this and then I'll probably need to end the episode depending on how long this runs. Well, I don't know. Then again, maybe not. I may have time to run out of this place, but there's still a lot of area that I need to explore. It looks like there's a whole section I haven't been in. So I may have to save that for the next episode. But in any case, uh, here we go. Golden film reel. Let's watch. Rapture is filled corner to corner with detail and history, and the cast of characters that occupy this world are no less dynamic. Every splicer, every level boss has a story. In many ways, these characters are a reflection of their environment, and their environment, a reflection of their character. Let's talk about some of the characters in Bioshock. There's so many that fans love and there are many Wikia pages about them. You know, one thing that I think a lot of fans may not realize is you were telling stories with these characters, you know, a decade ago. And technology today, as we saw in, you know, a game like Infinite, you can do amazing things with facial expressions and storytelling. Conveying that emotion that you did 10 years ago with limited technology was challenging. How hard was it back in the day to sort of, you know, convey story in engine? We had such a small team that, you know, we had to show Tenenbaum or Atlas. They were just splicer models, right? Yeah. Oh, really? Tenenbaum was Lady Smith. 
yeah. which is there there's a reason that she's in shadow behind glass and it's not to be dramatic it's because we couldn't afford to build another really yeah we just saw something as simple as that like you couldn't afford to build we, a did, we, we didn't have the yeah we, we there, we, there we were didn't have the, we had a few uh, character models in the game there's the what, maybe eight or nine character, build models character models really yeah. wow so we're like oh we'll put her in silhouette behind a light and people think it's noir and so much of it was driven by the the voice performance i feel like yes. too because i mean that it all had to it was like a radio play in many ways still yeah, we had some really good actors, and I was able to spend a lot of time with them. And the fact that I could write the stuff, direct it, and then rewrite in the room, and the fact that we had actors who were, for whatever reason, you know, I, would, I, I wasn't even in the same room as them. I was on a speakerphone. Right. They were in a studio in New York or L.A. or something. I never met, I don't think I met any of them. Really? Uh, None of the actors in Bioshock you ever met in person when you were making the game? Maybe since, but at wow. the time, I hadn't met a single one of them. That's fascinating. Except maybe a couple people like... You know, I played the Circus of Hours thing. Nate Wells played the uh, the, the Jack on the tr on the plane. You know, uh -huh. a couple of people in the studio. It was community theater. You know, in terms of the the tech and the sort of time we had for it. But the actors were. You know, we had some and exceptional actors. I will say, as as you know, doing animation on that game, that you can hide bad animation behind really good audio and it makes the animation look better. We didn't have a tech animator, it was me. I'd never rigged characters before and I'm, now I'm rigging characters trying to figure out how you know, to get all of these characters out right, to that. the animation team. So we're very limited when it came to animation tools. Yeah, Since but apologize but did, to my the, animators. No, but yeah. you did the big, I mean, for your, for your first game that you rigged the Big Daddy, which is, yeah. you know, it's not an easy character to rig. It was, you know, we figured it out, but the tools that we had on Infinite were not the tools that we had on Bioshock. So you, you've, we figured out what we could do and what we could do well and, and tried to hide, kind of, you know, put into the darkness the things that we knew we couldn't do very well. And having voice actors of that caliber that can bring those characters to life, you tend to fill in the blanks. So tell me, friend, which one of the bitches sent you? The KGB wolf or the CIA general? Here's the news. Rapture sure isn't some sunken ship for you to plunder. And Anne Ryan isn't the giddy socialite who can be strapped around by government muscle. And you did get to revisit Rapture in the DLC for Infinite, and you know, with today's technology or technology from a few years ago, it, I'm sure it was liberating for you guys in some ways to be able to, to use that tech to bring the environment and also characters to life. What was that experience like for you guys to go back and sort of revisit Rapture? It was liberating because we got to revisit it, but we also, I think, when we started, thought we'd be able to go reuse some of the old assets, <laughs> and they just didn't hold up anymore right. compared to the infinite assets. So we basically had to rebuild, not just rebuild everything from scratch, we had to reimagine it yeah. from scratch yeah. because you know it, it, we had the ability to make it look grander and bigger, but still feel like exactly like Rapture. It was a different kind of, we're making a different kind of experience than, than Bioshock 1, so it was tricky to find, to make it feel like it was the same kind of game because uh, it wasn't, you know, the first one was sort of an action game, the second one was really a stealth game. Um, you know, the Barrel Sea Part Two was really a stealth game, and you're really telling the story of Elizabeth throughout those things. Yeah. So it was a different lens, but it was also cool because it allowed me to make the whole story about Elizabeth, you know, yeah. to have her be central to the, the franchise from the very beginning, and she's always, you know, she became the heart of it to me, and to have her, it was really exciting for me to make her you know, her heroism be something that set the events of Bioshock into motion, which eventually, you know, saves all of the little sisters. That was, that was really gratifying, a nice way to tie the whole thing up for me. And you probably didn't have that idea 10 years ago, right? You had to yeah. retrofit it off? <laughs> I have no, no idea. He has Are a letter that he's plan? addressed to himself <laughs> that's 10 years old. Yeah. But yeah. I don't know. We'll I mean, for me, it was, it, was a, it was a nice way for me to say goodbye to Bioshock and Bioshock Infinite because, you know, those two worlds together. You know, you don't realize, or I don't think the audience realizes how much time you spend with these characters trying to get them out and polished and, and into the world. And it was a good opportunity, I think, as a game developer to kind of have that little coda at the end where you're like, okay, I, I get to, now I'm ready to move on to the next thing. I've had a nice, you know, break. Like, let, let's, right. let's seal this off and now, now I'm on to the next thing. And it was like 12 years of our lives, too, between, yeah, between the, little... the very beginning of it, and it was a long time. Well, I mean, so my daughter, who is 16 now, I did a lot of filming of her when she was oh, yeah. six as a little sister. Oh, wow. And this was, it was not mocap, it was just running around the office. 
And I'm like trying to be like, um, now trip over the thing and pretend you die. Or like, you know, like trying to like not like Drink traumatize a six year old. Yeah. Pretend you're drinking something and you know, and I, I never showed her the actual game until much later. But she uh on BSI I used her I put her in a mocap suit and actually used her for the little sister oh, wow. in Paris uh -huh. that's running after the balloon. So that was kind of for me like a nice nice way to connect it all yeah. together. Were there any characters on the original game that you found hardest to write? I mean, you mentioned like, you know, recasting Atlas, things like that, but was there a character that was ch the most challenging for you, Ken? Well, Atlas, because, you know, he was basically written completely twice. That was yeah. very, very tough. And I was very happy about the original character, and I thought I'd really done something great. And then you showed it to people, and they just hated it, and they didn't trust him. And if they didn't trust him, we were screwed. Awful for it, yeah. And so it was tough, because we, um, after having gone through all the recordings, actually, I had to let the actor go it's no fault of his own, right? That's, it was on us. He, he had invested in it, tell him that it wasn't going to happen, and rewrite it from scratch. That was hard, and that was, that was tough. And then after I finished it, I had a debate with somebody on the team who felt the accent was really, really phony. And we had an English person on the team, and he felt the accent was really, really phony. So at the last minute, we basically ended up doing a focus test in, in Ireland. Right. Um, oh, wow to see if people bought the accent. Because actually, the actor playing Atlas was Irish, uh -huh. but he was from a different part of Ireland, so he was okay. playing a different kind of Irish accent. Right. Um, I don't think he was from Dublin, and Atlas sort of had a Dublin accent. And so at the last minute, I thought I was going to have to do it again. Oh, wow. And fortunately, the focus test came back, um, and, it, it. and people loved it. I don't know how you survived that plane crash, but I've never been one to question Providence. I'm Atlas, and I aim to keep you alive. And a lot of the villains in the game felt like they were, you know, very much tied to certain levels. And this was, you know, you were still in an environment of levels with Bioshock, right? It wasn't just a big open world. Did that all sort of get designed together? It's like, here's the best villain that's going to fit to this environment and this theme of, you know, this area? Some of them work better than others. I mean, I think obviously Steinman, like Steinman and especially Sandra Cohen really, I think, dominate in terms of the level they boss. They are the levels. Know, yeah. They are the levels. And, and some of the characters didn't hold up as well, I don't think, um, on the writing side. The fun thing about the characters at work, like Simon, where he had all those little displays with the scissors and the tech, you know, like that was stuff the art team came up with to support that character. And obviously, Sandra Cohen, in that level, you know, I had this idea for this character, and, you know, it was this artist, and, and taking Andrew Ryan's thinking to the extreme, you know, uh -huh. through a lens of art, was really fun. They really, I mean, in a lot of ways, they're like more like Batman villains than they are like actual, you know, real world villains that they all have a, you know, the Joker cares far more about the humor and the dark humor that he has, and the Riddler cares more about the riddles than he actually does about money. You know, right. the, the money, the crime is afterthought, right. it's the philosophy. And so these characters have a lot in common with, and there's probably a lot of inspiration taken from sort of characters like the Joker in terms of a guy, like, like any of the characters in Bioshock, because they were really driven by their ideology. And, but their ideology is a mask for their sense of selves, right? You know, this stuff is really, Cohen knows he's a hack, and he doesn't want to, you know, he can't admit that to himself, so he has to wrap himself in all this nonsense, because the last thing he could ever do is look in the mirror and say, I'm not much of an artist. No need to thank me for jamming the transmissions of those boors, Atlas and Ryan. Let them have their squabble. The artist, yes, the artist knows there is richer earth to till. And we're back. All right, we have watched the director's commentary. We have been in the projection booth at the Fleet Theater. We are supposed to be leaving Fort Frolic, but it looks like there's an area over here I have not explored. So I'm going to go explore it. If we come out of the theater and go down the stairs and come down here past the Circus of Values vending machine. I don't know, maybe I should go try to loot those Houdini splicers that were in the theater, maybe? While I'm in here, the ones that I shot. Are any more going to show up? <laughs> Are they even lootable? The bodies fall? 
They were up there. There's that guy. I don't know if I can reach him. Oh, probably not. I don't know where her body went. Maybe it despawned when he spawned. Alright, well, we're out then. Let's get out of here. I'm gonna double check the map again. Alright, I think I need to go down the stairs and to the right, huh? Now, is this guy gonna aggro on me? There, Sender Cohen. Yep, he doesn't seem to be aggroing on me. Is he gonna get mad if he sees that I'm still here? That's what I'm wondering. right past him. Maybe he won't see me. Alright, hang on now. Let me check the map. To my left. There seems to be something over here that I haven't explored. I found that one. Ah! Oh, what is this? Set on fire in here. <gasps> oh! I will take that first aid kit. And I will buy more first aid kits. Oh my gosh. No, I don't need any more electric buck. Incendiary bolts would be nice. Oh, heck yeah. And another first aid kit. Sure. Uh, so yeah, let's go in here. What's what's back here? I don't know. All right, screaming. Lovely. fight each other. They seem to be mad at each other. Cause I've got a tonic that makes me invisible if I sit still. I can move back and forth like this, but I can't move my feet or I'll become visible again. Alright, they seem to be... They seem to be gone. Come to the record store. That's my alarm. I'll show you what I figure. Plink, plink, plink. Uh, okay. Well, we've already taken care of him. So we don't need to go to the record store. Dini Splicer. Alright, before we go any further, let's search the bathrooms. I like to be thorough. I know I can't go on for too much longer. Oh shoot, these things. I guess they're not alive yet, so I can't shoot them yet. They're gonna come to life and they're gonna come after me. I just know it. I don't like it. But 
but I gotta search the place. No, I don't need to use the toilet. <laughs> but I did crap my pants a little when I came around the corner and saw those. Okay. Alright, are they gonna come to life and come after me? Probably. Let's go look in here. <gasps> There's another first aid kit. Oh shoot. <laughs> and that's why there's a first aid kit. Alright, I am going to have to call it uh, an episode because my alarm's gone off and I can't go much longer. Or uh, PlayStation, I can only upload a certain amount of gameplay at a time. It'll only save up to 60 minutes. And to make sure that I don't go past that and lose some of my gameplay from the front end, I need to go ahead and upload what I've got right now. So we are very close to the end of Fort Frolic. I am going to search through this area here, whatever this may be. And we have this goal here, which is to leave and get the hell out of here. We've done everything else in the level. We've searched through everything else. We've killed all the people we needed to kill. We ended up leaving Sander Cohen alive. He seems like he's doing all right in the atrium. Hopefully he won't aggro on us like he did. Or I won't accidentally start shooting at him or something like I did when I had to reload a few episodes ago. Okay, so uh, here we are. And here's what we'll be when I come back next time. Thanks for being here. If you're enjoying yourself, please like, subscribe, tell your friends, and you can always check my video uh, upload and live streaming game playing schedule on my Patreon page. You don't need to be a patron in order to see the schedule, but if you are a patron for as little as a dollar a month, you will see lots of other bonus content on there and you'll be able to help support this channel so I can continue doing cool giveaways like the Bioshocktober giveaway that I was doing for the month of October and the winner for that will be announced uh, in the next episode. Thanks so much! Bye!